The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 14th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. You'd send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A wonderful Wednesday, of course. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside, with the exception being the Dow Transports, which are off 175 points. They're down one and three tenths percent. The Dow is up four tenths, or 138 points, six tenths for the S&P, 25 points, one percent for the Nasdaq 100, 121 points. The Russell's up two tenths, or three points. Semis up one and three tenths percent. That's 34 points to the upside. Gold is flat. It's off a buck fifty, trading at 17, 15, 80. Silver's up 15 cents. 1965 is the print. There lights recruit up nearly two bucks at 89. And change the natural gas up 44 cents. Nice move there. Trade out at 872. 30 year treasuries up 12 ticks. 132.24 is the print. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside. You've got um, AMTD Digital. You got a bunch of uh, ETFs. Pioneer National Resource up 12 bucks or 5%. Tesla's up about 12 bucks, 4%. Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman is up 950 or 2%. To the downside, it's Nucor. Off 12 bucks, 9%. Union Pacific is down 10 bucks or 4%. Norfolk Southern off 7 bucks and change. Reliance Steel down 7 bucks. Humana is off 6. That's about 1 and 3 tenths percent to the downside. So, no requests so far, which is fine. Let's uh, start analyzing what took place yesterday in the market. So, to begin that, we'll just take a look at our daily equity future contracts. And what we will see in all four instances, well, three of the four instances, price pulled back and tested support. And support being, this is the ES, the NQ, and the Dow. So your upper uh, row and the uh, lower left panel out there. And what took place yesterday is price pulled back and tested and rejected so far support. Support being either the bottom of the daily profiles or the bottom of the daily profiles and the rising trend lines out there. So support is not busted. That's an important thing to know. The Russell 2000 never made its way back to the bottom of its profile, but it did make its way into the zone, the bullish structured zone out there between 1805.11 and 1843. The price is able to close above 1843. We're at 1844 right now. That's a signal that price wants to make a move up to the top of that profile, and that's at the 1920 level. So that's what the daily equity future contracts are doing. We could take a look at all kinds of instruments and see something similar. In fact, here's the daily Apple chart out here. And what you'll see yesterday is price did what? It pulled back and tested and rejected support. Support being the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 153.67. Okay, so we know that things, instruments pulled back and only tested support. Now, if they break through those levels of support, that suggests that the markets will go back and retest the June lows, maybe bust out those lows. That is not the message at 11.10 in the morning. Right now, the only message is yesterday's pullback, as large as it was, was still nothing more than a test of support. 
That doesn't mean we're headed zoom into the upside or anything. It's a possibility. But uh, market conditions don't support that just yet. What else took place yesterday? Well, let's look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. If we take a look at the uh, spies, the spies pulled back into a swing point. The swing point was from September the 6th. And the top of that swing point was 394.12. Price pulled back yesterday with quite a bit more volume. Yesterday's volume was 122 million versus the 99 million shares out there. Okay, so that's not good. What that typically suggests is that price will, if you close inside a swing point, you'll get back and you'll test the bottom of that swing point. That's at 388.42. That's not the message we have right now. In fact, volume today is 21 million shares. If price closes above 394.12 and it does it on less than, uh, does that, on, I'm sorry, does that on, did I grab the right? Oh, I did not grab the right. How did Stevie do that? Uh, here, if it uh, closes above that level on uh, less than 76 million shares, that would be a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. That's uh, the old phrase, if you can't bust them down, you try to bust them to the upside. Now, if we take a look at the QQQs, Zeno Visual wants to take a look at our cyber targets, then wants to take a look at the uh, the Qs out here. That's what we have up on our screen. The Qs pulled back with volume, closed inside the September 6th swing point. That had 57 million shares. Yesterday's volume inside the queues were 79 million shares out there. If price closed above 296.60 today, does with less than 57 million shares, I don't have any indication that that's what's going to happen. But if it does, that would be a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. If you take a look at the Dow Diamonds yesterday, pulling back into that same September 6th swing point with volume, did 4.3 million shares yesterday versus 3.3. Today, Price is tested and so far rejected the bottom of that swing. Again, the bottom of that swing is at 310.93. If you test that and reject it with less than 3.3 million shares, then you will have a signal that price wants to try to bust them the upside. Now, the upside bust would really at least be the uh, top of their daily profiles out there. And if we take a look at the IWM, never made it back to the swing point. It did this morning, and that swing point is September the 1st. Uh, September 6th, I apologize, and 180, that's one, at 181.08, that's the top of the swing. You got back this morning, you've tested, so far rejected, and the price can close above that 181.08 on less than 23 million shares, 23.8 million shares, you'd have another rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. Again, I don't know whether we'll have that. Now, let's go back and take a look at the Qs for a moment. As I mentioned, and we can see here, all of the index ETFs moving lower with volume. What does that mean for the Qs specifically in OVisual? Well, here is a chart of the Qs. This is a daily time frame chart. Those blue arrows identify high volume spikes to the downside. The interesting pattern about the QQQs is that it makes bottoms with volume. And yesterday was certainly accelerated volume. It's not as high as some of the volume spikes that we've seen, for example, back on February 24th or back on the uh, trading day of uh, January 24th. Or, uh, But it did have pretty darn good volume out there. So that is also something else to consider. So what we'll do here is now we'll switch over from this set of screens and we'll go take a look at the actual NQ multi time frame charts out there. So we want to get a feel for what's going on in the market. And we'll do that as soon as we get back from this break. Of course, I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. We'll be back in just a minute. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, NQs, the NASDAQ, the uh, QQQs. Uh, that first segment, we looked at each of the daily equity future contracts. We know that no levels of support have been broken. In fact, levels of support have uh, been tested and held. So that's one thing to certainly take a look at. Now, that being said, this is still just a counter trend move. And the reason I say that, if you take a look in the upper right hand corner, this is our TAS market breast speed dials. This helps us on, on four different time frames. We've got weekly, daily, the four hour time frame and the one hour time frame. When the uh, speed dial is in the red zone, as it is for each of these, it tells us that the balance is uh, in the direction of the bears, or meaning uh, that uh, price is trading below market profile for that time frame, more instruments trading below than above the top of the profile. As an example, on a 60-minute basis, so the shortest time frame that I have for this tool, I do have a 30-minute tool out there, we can see that there are 12 instruments with inside the NDX 100 trading above the top of their 60 minute profile and 56 trading below the bottom. That's the one hour time frame. We can go from one hour, go to four hours, just see how much damage was done. And then we take a look at six instruments on a four hour time frame trading above the top, 85 below the bottom out there. So that is bearish on a daily basis. It's uh, 10 above the top, 46 below the bottom, and on a weekly basis out here, the uh, numbers go like this, 14 above the top, 34 below the bottom. So, yeah, uh, there's a question about is this just a counter trend move uh, in Rahul in the SPY? Uh, and the answer is yes. If I change over and take a look at the SPY here just as an example, and we can see that the speed dials are also all in the red zone out there. So now let's go back to the QQQ charts or the NQ charts, I should say. And let's look at that 60 minute time frame. So what's going on in a 60-minute time frame? Well, what the 60-minute time frame shows us is a nice TD9 cal bottom. That formed uh, yesterday, uh, well, it really completed as the uh, market came to a close, the equity future contract out there. You got that confirmed TD9 cal bottom. It now has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So the TD9 cal bottom is held. You now have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So certainly a counter trend move is being attempted here. We've also seen well, we had the markets moving higher, and we saw that first sell-off, and that first sell-off did not take out the lows. So that's also something else to consider. So what is the likely outcome here with this rally 
is that the NQs should make their way up towards resistance. Now, in this case here, for the 60-minute time frame, the bottom, you only see two lines. The bottom and the center are at the same. This is where, that's that should have been where the buyers were at. But remember, this profile formed below price, which was a bearish signal, which is what we got until we got to the TD9 count bottom. So where price should bounce to, and the real first battleground on any move higher for the NQs is going to be, this on a 60-minute time frame, is going to be at the 12, 334 area. If price is able to take that out, then the next battleground, the uh, where the safeties are at, so to speak, on our defensive line, is at the 12407 level. If price can overcome that, then the, then 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 I would I would say chances are that the TAS market profiles for the 60 minute have also flipped out there. But as far as where should a counter trend move take us to inside the NQ? Well, on a 60 minute basis, that target's going to be 12334. Now, intraday we might find, or you know, shorter term time frame charts than that, we might find something different. Do we see anything different here? Actually, I don't see anything on a 10-minute or 15-minute worth commenting on. On the 30-minute chart out here, what we can see is also a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom of this form. Now, in this case, price is above the top of its profile out there. So I did mention I have a 30-minute uh, tool where we can take a look at market breadth. So now let's go to, and if there's going to be any changes in trend, it always starts or it should always start on the intraday time periods, the shorter-term time, time periods, and then move its way up. So let's look at a 30-minute time frame market breadth for the uh, NQs out there. This is the S&P. Let's switch over to the NQ, see where we're at. This is the TAS market profile tool. And right now, as this gets updated, go ahead. We've got a uh, bullish position. What I mean by that is bullish market breadth. In that, 38 instruments are trading above the top of the 30-minute profile, and 13 are trading below. So with price now above the top of the 30-minute profile, as long as that condition remains, the top of that profile, by the way, is at 12,200.50. I know it says 63, but you can't trade to that. So 12, it's you either use 0.75. Let's use 0.75. So the area to watch here, as long as price remains above 12,200.75 or 12,213, we should see a further rally. Now, all that that is really doing for you and I, because we don't have any other levels of resistance that we can clearly see on the NQ on that 30-minute chart, takes us back to the 60-minute chart out there. And again, that's at 12, uh, 334 level out there. And there's nothing in the 15 to the 10-minute charts to suggest otherwise. So odds favor at this moment, that's where price is headed to. So let's go take a look at the two-hour time frame chart. I don't have a two-hour uh, TAS market breath out there. We took a look at the four-hour. We know that that was uh, really negative out here. On a two-hour time frame, what price did as we were, well, this was at 10 o'clock, I believe. Let me just make sure. This candle, I think, is, yeah, 10 a.m. What price did was confirm the Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, in a two-hour time frame, and price right now is dealing with potential resistance, the red oscillator and change line. If price is able to overcome that area, the next battleground, it's really the battle is between where it's trading right now, about 12, let's call it 12, 214, to 12, 263. So on the NQ, on a two-hour time frame, if price is able to close above 12,263, which is a bulbous structured profile, which has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, then that would signal its intent to move up to the top of the profile, or 12,444. So now let's step back for a moment. We've got 12,334 as a real likely target and resistance level for the NQs based upon the 60-minute time frame chart. If price can clear that, it's 12,407. If you go back to the uh, 30 uh, two-hour chart, it's 12. 444. So those are where your battles are at. On the four hour and the five hour time frames, you still have the old Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So those are still in play out here. Um, and on the daily time frame, as we covered, well, you have your buy the D point pattern that was confirmed with the uh, September 7th uh, bullish engulfing candle. It's only a close below that low that negates the buy the D point. That low is at 11 50 out there. Um, SR, this is a question inside the Tiger's Den from John, or Z. SR, on the ES mini charts, did price action on anything on the five-hour, two-hour chart signal an end to the abrupt decline? So let's try to answer that here for John. Let's punch in the uh, ES mini. Give me a moment. This will take just a moment here to populate. And we will see the five-hour and the uh, two-hour time frame charts out there, which we know the two-hour time frame chart, uh, it's really the four-hour time frame chart that's got that bullish crossover. But the answer to your question here, John, 
on a five hour time frame, the answer would be that price pulled back to its TD nine count breakout level. And that number is 39.59.50. So that, now does it say that that's an abrupt stop? It, no, that's where support is at. That's where the breakout support is at. That's where those that are buyers, if they're still there, that's where they would be looking to add to a position. And that's on the five hour time frame chart. On the uh, four hour time frame chart, now, price is right now just dealing with that 39.69.50. That's slightly different than what we got on the five-hour time frame chart. What I can share with you, though, Z, is that in both instances, both the five-hour and four-hour, their confirmed bottom patterns are still in place out there. That's the Roads Mintum Indicator bottom. That matches the buy the D-point bottom in the ES Mini, but also confirmed on September 7th. That says its ultimate level of support is 3,900, even Steven. We take a look at the, uh, while we get back to this break, we'll further look at the uh, 60 minute or the ES mini charts, and then we'll see if we've got any questions. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So now we've got that 30-minute uh, TAS market profile tool. It's called the Edge up on uh, our system here. Uh, just like we did for the NQ, just rolling through the same process here. Now, on a 30-minute basis, this just uh, flipped back to the uh, uh, bear side, so to speak, or the seller side. In that, there's 97 instruments trading above the top of the 30-minute profile, and there are 144 trading below the bottom. So we should see some selling pressure here inside of the ES Mini. Now, let's go actually take a look at the charts, see what we have going on. So let's take a look at the uh, – let's go take a look at the 30-minute chart since that's what we were on. And yeah, it's showing a little bit of selling pressure. Now, where could that – right now, what price did, it formed on a 30-minute basis. It formed a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. And price ran right into resistance right at the top of its bearish structured 
30 minute profile. That's at the 39, 79, 50 level. So what you can do is write that down on your padded paper. If you do see it close above that, resistance on a 30 minute basis will have failed and it would suggest price should head higher. We're inside a bear structured profile and that bar at 11.30, close right below the center of that, that would suggest the ES Mini. I would not be surprised if the ES Mini pull back to test support. And that would be either the bottom of the profile and a saucer and change line, right around the 39.50 level. Does it have to do that? It doesn't have to do that, but that's what I would be uh, looking for out there. If that area fails, then you go back and you retest the lows uh, from the uh, 10 o'clock uh, session out here. But watch 39.79.50 because price close above that, Price will have overtaken a bearish structured profile that'll tell you about the strength of the buyers versus the sellers. On a 60 minute time frame, you've got that TD9 count bottom and you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal. But what's missing here so far is the uh, bullish reversal candle. Oh, that looks like a hammer candle to me. So we're going to go with that as a hammer candle. And you've got a confirmed 60 minute a bottom signal. Not seeing anything really worth noting on the uh, 10 or 15 minute charts out here. The two hour time frame chart is attempting to form a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal. Needs a bullish reversal candle. The four hour and the five hour charts have held up. Uh, we already talked about that. And uh, so there's nothing else really that I can add here. Um, so right now, because of market breath, we believe that this is just a counter trend move. However, what we have to do is watch these resistance levels to see what happens. So you and I have an unfair advantage by knowing where buyers and sellers are hanging out. And then the question is, we don't know this until we actually see what takes place, is uh, who's got the upper hand here? Who's able to take out who in the uh, game of, uh, of these uh, markets out there? So you get the ES Mini really doing what it, uh, you know, what it, what it should do based upon that market breadth. And now we just have to see, does support hold on any further move lower out there? So let's do this. Let's go. We've got a couple of questions that have uh, come in. The first question was from Alton. And Alton wanted to take a look at natural gas and uh, oil uh, more on a long-term basis. We'll do both long-term and a uh, short-term. So for this, we're going to switch panels. Uh, and this is going to give us our bigger view. So we're just trying to first have a larger view as to what the market's intent likely is. So we begin here. We've got this set of screens or this screen has both the natural gas and which is the bottom row and oil up at the top. If we just start with the yearly time frame, what you will see in both instances is prices trade above last year's high. That tells us we are in a bull market. It's really that simple out there. But, of course, it's a yearly time frame, so we want to understand what's going on in the shorter-term time frames. But right now, things are bullish. You probably didn't need me to tell you that, nor the charts. But here you can quickly see that we are trading above last year's high. That is a signature of a bullish move. If we look at the monthly time frame for natural gas, that's the bottom panel, it still does have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom or topping signal. And it generated that signal the month of uh, June of 2022. Now, if that high can get taken out, and this is a continuous contract, so it's going to be maybe accurate or very close to accurate. I've got a 9.57 for we really need to go back and take a look at the contract out there to see what that high was. But for our purposes and this chart, if price were to close above 9.57, that's then going to negate that signal and tell you that you're really in a bullish move. We're still in a bullish move out here. Even though you've got that, that topping pattern on the monthly, it's really more neutral because price is above the top of its profile, not shown here, and its green oscillator and change line. The weekly time frame, which confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out here, price is rallying back and is trying to get above that green oscillator and change line. I mean, it's sitting right on it right now. If price can overcome that level, and that's at about 870 three, 872 and a half out there. If you can close above on a weekly basis, green oscillator and change line, it increases the odds and probability that price is going to go target its recent highs or the top out there. On a daily basis, bottom right-hand corner, natural gas had a TD nine count top. Well, its work was done last week. When you get a TD nine count top, price is going to pull back to support. Well, support, I don't show the daily profiles here. I'm not sure why I don't have them turned on, but I don't. And, um, but price got back to its breakout level. What I do know is price got below the bottom of the profile. And that sent price right back to its breakout area of $7.70. On a daily basis, just like on the weekly time frame, price is dealing with its oscillator and change line. That is really odd. But it's true. How about that? Um, so they're both at the same place. And if price, if price can close above, let me give you the exact number now. The exact number on the daily time frame is 8.712. If price closed above 8.712, odds favor that it wants to make its way back towards the 950 level or get back towards the $10 area. 
But overall, with regard to natural gas, it is outright bullish out here. Um, on a shorter term time frame, what do I have? I don't, you know what? I'd, I'd, I'd have to go to a whole other set of charts out there. Let's just take a look at light sweet crude. The message on light sweet crude yearly is bullish. Monthly, I had a sell the D point top with this little bearish shooting star. All the pressure is able to do is pull back and test its. Uh, green oscillator and change line this is a bullish signal as long as price closes above that oscillator and change line currently printing at the 88.69 area the weekly time frame has a td9 count bottom that is still in place out there that suggests that price should go target 98.03 and on a daily time frame i know the price just consolidated with inside its daily profile but it does have a wave number seven bottom that is letter g with price above its oscillator and change line, it suggests that it wants to get back towards that 96, 97, 98 area. And we'll say 98 because that is the weekly oscillator and change line. So, Alton, that's a review of both light sweet crude and natural gas. So that means we've got a natural transition here, uh, courtesy of Hector and Patty. And the reason I say it's natural is because they ask about the XLE. Kind of like that little smooth groove move into it. We take a look at the underlying instruments that are going to affect the energy sector and get a decent feel. And now we're going to go just take a look at the daily, weekly, and monthly time frames as we switch over to take a look at the energy sector. So to do that, i got to make sure I'm on the right screen. Oh, well, okay. Well, that, that certainly took care of it. Let me get to the uh, proper screen out here, and let me move to the uh, proper set of uh, charts. So now we've got the energy sector. Hector and Patty's question is, XLE, possible baby A to B equals CD up using the September 7th as the A point. Please confirm. So I actually, for the A to B equals CD, I'll go back to my black background charts in a moment here because I can draw those patterns in. But let's uh, do this here. Let's just see what kind of signals we have. Right now, the daily time frame, this was a sell the D point pattern. And that was confirmed with this little bear separation candle on August the 30th. Okay, price moves lower. I don't have a reason why price found a bottom where that it did out here when I take a look at the daily time frame. But let's just take a look at the current information. And that is that they, we've had a nice little rally in the energy sector today. And that has taken us back inside the daily profile right into the seller zone. The say bearish structure profile. So Hector and Patty, the seller zone is between 8289 and 8373. Price has to overtake that. And quite frankly, it'll need to close above the August 29th high out there. That high is at 80. 518 in order to generate any kind of A to B equals CD to the upside, baby or otherwise. When we come back from this break, we'll go back to those black background charts. We'll at least draw in what I think is the baby A to B equals CD to the upside, just in case price is able, the energy sector that is, is able to take out that 8518 level. Again, that's the high of August 29th. Steve Brones with TFNN, right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Looking back up, folks, Dow's up 96, S&P 16. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, um, XLE sector here. So the A to B equals CD pattern that Hector and Patty are taking a look at, uh, this little baby one. He's using the September 7th swing point low, absolutely uh, feasible and, and doable. That low, by the way, is at the uh, 76, 78 area. That's your A point. Your B point out here, as he's identified, would be the high from uh, September the 12th. That high is out at 82.97. You get a pullback, about a 54% retracement, so it's more than a 0.382. So it certainly qualifies in Stevie's mind as a potential A to B equals CD. Now, what price needs to do is close above 82.97, and it needs to do that with more than uh, 21 million shares. Today, through a little over two hours of trading, we're at 12 million shares. So that is certainly a possibility. So if price does overcome that, Hector, yes, it's an A to B equals CD, but you have to know you're also trading into the sell zone out here. So even though you can get that positive signal, you just don't know the strength of the sellers, which we know they're sitting between 82.89 and 83.72. If price can overtake that, then yes, price is going to come back and test the swing point, complete that A to B equals CD. The swing point I'm referring to is August 29th. You want to watch the volume as price moves up into that area. If it's more than 26 million shares, that would be good. There's been all kinds of A to B equals CD up patterns out here. The other area of resistance that you want to be aware of, you've got 83.72. That's coming from the daily, and you have 84.98. That's coming from the monthly time frame out there. So those are where your battle zones are at. If price can get through there, then you've got the uh, continuation of the A to B equals CD pattern. So I hope that helps you out, Hector and Patty. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. We've got some requests inside the Tigers Den. The first one coming from SNP. And what SMP wants to take a look at is Snap. Well, that makes sense. He's got the initials of SNP out there. So that's a cool thing. So now let's go switch over to our white background charts, three different time frames that we're going to take a look at. And let's go see what the charts for SNAP tell us. Well, the charts for SNAP tell us what? Looks like a uh, looks like a bit of a consolidation, sideways consolidation. When I take a look at the daily time frame chart, you have a new daily profile that formed yesterday. Resistance at 1203, support is at 1090. You pulled back, it's a slightly bullish structured profile on a daily basis. You're testing the center where there's both buyers and sellers at 1134. It did have a wave number seven top out there. Um, nothing else really to share with you on the daily time frame. The weekly has a nice bottom. It's a rose momentum indicator bottom. And prices just uh, looks like, uh, well, where is the profile here? Uh, maybe it's above the profile. Let me uh, check here. The top is at 1078. Yes, so on a weekly basis, SNAP is looking pretty good as long as price remains above, uh, what was it, uh, sorry, uh, 1078. You've got a nice TD Nikel bottom on the monthly time frame. That really suggests that over time, and I do mean over time, that what SNAP, Crackle, and Pop wants to do is move up to that red oscillator and change line, currently printed at 3019. So you have a nice bottom on the weekly. You also have that bottom on the uh, daily time frame. And which could be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. The way it would do that is it would close above the high from the trading day of August the 18th. 
It would do it with more than 62 million shares. And that high is 12.78. That would set up a nice A to B equals CD to the upside out there. So with regard to Snap right now, I just have a little consolidation on the daily time frame. Nice bullish signals on the monthly and the weekly. SNP. I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Next request coming in from MKC inside our Tiger's Den. MKC wants to take a look at uh, Facebook, otherwise now known as Meta, M-E-T-A. So Meta, yesterday, what did Meta get below its June? Yeah. So Meta yesterday, well, really, so many of the indices have June as the lows. In the case of Meta, it was July. Oh, it was June, June 23rd. So price closed below that uh, June 23rd low. It already taken that out. As far as bottom signals, there's roads meant to indicator signals that have been triggered. In order for Meta or Facebook to form some type of bottom, we really need to see some type of bullish reversal candle out there. That's coming from the day, uh, daily time frame. The monthly says if you close below the low of the hammer candle from uh, June 24th, that set up the roads meant to indicator bottom. That low is 154.25. That price is likely going to head lower. So you're going to want to watch at the end of the week. That's Friday. By the way, I'm on vacation tomorrow and Friday. I won't be here to be able to do shows out there, but we'll return on uh, Monday out there. And it'll probably be exhausted, but I will return on uh, Monday. And uh, so you want to watch that 154.25 level MKC. On a monthly time frame, it has a TD9 count bottom that potentially is going to get negated. Now, it's too early in the month out here to know that, but if there is a close at the end of the month below 154.25, that signals lower price. Lower price to where? The lower price to where would be its TD9 count breakout level back at the 115.51. So as we speak right now, MKC, that's really the message or appears to be the message of Meta or Facebook is that it wants to trade down into the 115.51 level. The confirmation would likely come this week with a close below the bottom of that hammer candle that we looked at. And then the assumption would be we don't have a bottom signal on the uh, daily time frame either. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Much appreciated. We've got another request inside the Tiger's Den. This one is from Dan. He wants to take a look at ticker symbol ABUS. So let's get that fired up on our screen out here and go see what uh, that is signaling to both you and I. ABUS. On a daily basis, Dan, Assuming that my data feed, I'm not seeing price move here. Um, that doesn't mean that it's uh, not working. Uh, it's $2.35 two, two is mm -hmm. what it's trading at right now. And it's trading right into, and I mean right into, the top of its daily profile. The top of its daily profile is $2.35. The price is sitting at two thirty-five. Now, Dan, if price can take that out, even if I don't see a bottom pattern out here, and I don't know that I do or don't, it looks like there's probably an act of A to B equals CD that was completed out here. Um, the problem is it might have been completed and then it was negated, and we don't have a bullish reversal. Okay, well, today's rising window would be that signal. So watch 235, Dan. If pricing close above 235, then your next battle is at 245. 245 is the center of its bullish structured weekly profile. Um, there is like, well, no, I don't really see a bottom on the weekly time frame. Uh, that TD9 count pattern, well, I take that back. The TD9 count pattern is the bottom out here. I was uh, too focused on this uh, hammer candle back here in May. We don't need to do that because that was never a part of the count. So the weekly time frame, Dan, has a nice TD9 count bottom. So 245, if price can clear 235, you got a battle of 245. If price can clear 245, then the next battle is at the 283 to 285 area. On a monthly time frame, we do not have a bottom signal, um, so it's really going to be the daily and the weekly that will guide you. Resistance on the uh, monthly chart is at about the 252 level. Above 252, you're at 266. So that's what we see when we take a look at ticker symbol ABUS. you got a little fight between the buyers and the sellers at 235. Price right now trading out at 236. Let me check my emails here, see if we've got any other requests. Otherwise, uh, we're good, and we've been able to get through everybody's request out there. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't have anything. So that is a, a beautiful thing. All right, so now what do we want to take a look at since we've been through all the requests? I don't know. Well, I know what we want to do. Let's go take a look at Nucor, N-U-E. I know that one of our dinners loves this uh, stock out there. It may not be as in much love today. It's down about 10% or $13.31. Now, this is taking out a swing point, uh, which is a hammer candle from back on September the uh, 1st out there. That had volume of about 2.1 million shares. Today, so far, you've got 2.2 million shares. Nucor 
is telling you and I, now there's not really an A to B equal C to the downside, but it is suggesting to you and I, your price closes below 122.85, that we'll see a run back to the 111.49 area. See Roach with TFNN. Hope you're right now. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got the uh, we've got the natural gas contracts up on our uh, screen here right now. You've got the uh, October, November, December, and uh, January uh, 2023 contracts. Each of them show the uh, that price. What price is doing right now is trading into descending trend line. Price found support at a rising trend line. It's now trading into its descending trend line area. If price can clear that. That uh, that would suggest that price would continue to move higher. In the case of the uh, October contract. Uh, that price target to the upside, if price can take out the descending trend line, would be nine dollars and sixty-eight cents. The uh, November contract, if price can clear that descending trend line, then its next battleground would be at nine fourteen, and above nine fourteen, you'd be looking at ten oh four out there. Um, so that's what's going on with regard to natural gas. Let's go back, take a look at the equity markets out here to close out the uh, show. Let's switch over. Let's take a look at all of the sixty-minute time frame charts out there for the equity futures that is and we begin in the upper left you've got the es mini uh the es mini again waiting for a bullish reversal candle to confirm but the es mini has got to, so both of these so both the nq both the nq and the es both the bottom of their profiles were the bottom and the center and that's at 39 39 there we go see 39.94 39.95 so 39.95 is going to be a real resistance level on a move to the upside. If price can overtake that, 
don't have any indication that it will, then we're looking to move up to the 4031 area. The NQ, it does have a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom, and it is very likely headed to the 12252 area. In the case of the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, um, it's kind of like, so here the issue is, the reason why these candles are not showing as hammer candles, one that took place in the last hour, was because they didn't occur during a down move. It was enough of a sideways move out there to say, okay, maybe we don't have a hammer candle out there. Nonetheless, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, its first battleground, should it continue to move higher out here, is going to be a 31.380. And the Russell 2000 is the one that is strong like bull. Why do we say that? It's got that nice confirmed road momentum indicator bottom, and price right now is taking a resistance at 1838.70. You've got about three and a half minutes left out there. Price can close above that 1838.70. What the Russell 2000 is saying is rally on. Folks, I'll see you on Monday. Have a wonderful Wednesday, a great week, weekend, and I'll see you Monday again. Take care.